Okay, now question of the day. Should an able-bodied actor be able to play a disabled character? This debate is lighting up social media right now, but it's not new. African Americans, Native Americans, Asians, members of the LGBT community, and people with other disabilities have been dealing with this issue for a long time. But this most recent debate was sparked by a new movie currently in theaters, The Upside, starring Bryan Cranston and Kevin Hart. Now, according to Wikipedia, the movie is about Philip, a wealthy quadriplegic who needs a caretaker to help him with his day-to-day -day routine in his New York penthouse. He decides to hire Dell, a struggling parolee, trying to reconnect with his ex and his young son. Despite coming from two different worlds, an unlikely friendship starts to blossom as Dell and Philip rediscover the joy of living life to the fullest. Now, I'm sure you can tell by me quoting and crediting Wikipedia that I haven't seen the movie. And it's not out of protest, I just haven't gotten around to seeing it. Um, I've talked to some people who've seen it, and it seems like a pretty cool movie. But the big controversy is that Brian Cranston received a ton of backlash, particularly on social media, for playing a quadriplegic. One person said, Brian Cranston is trending for being cast as a quadriplegic man. I see lots of people defending him, saying that it's his job as an actor. As a disabled actor myself, let me point out that such roles are the only roles disabled actors would be considered for, yet we still aren't. Someone else said, Disabled actors aren't cast in roles that center disability, and also aren't cast in roles that don't center disability. Yet somehow, people don't see this as evidence of discrimination or anything negative. And then there are others that feel quite differently. Brian Cranston having to defend himself for playing a disabled person is a prime example of the ridiculous culture we've created for ourselves. He's an actor. We all need to get a grip and stop the daily assault of outrage and nonsense. And then there's the special ones. Show me an actor with quadriplegia as capable as Brian Cranston. And this one's even better. I'd support this if you could find a disabled person with the acting chops of Brian Cranston. Now, Brian Cranston himself has defended his choice for playing the role, saying that it was a business decision, also saying that an actor's job is to portray other people. If I, as a straight, older person, and I'm wealthy, I'm very fortunate, does that mean I can't play a person who is not wealthy? Does that mean I can't play a homosexual? We are now living in a world where people rightfully want to be seen and recognized and reflected in media as they are in real life. But we are also now living in outrage culture, full of misguided, misinformed, and uninformed backlash. And while I'm sure we could all agree that white actors playing black people is unacceptable, it's not so cut and dry for other communities. So which category does the upside fall into? Well, I'll give you my opinion. I'm actually conflicted about this. I see this through two lenses. I see it as a quadriplegic disabled man, but I can also see it through the lens of an actor. Well, first, I'll give my opinion from an actor's point of view, and then I'll give my opinion from a quadriplegic's point of view. So, my disabled brothers and sisters, don't direct a whole bunch of negativity at me. Let me just give you my both my sides. So, first off, I can see this from an actor's standpoint because I have an actor's mind and actor's heart. And I will say this, actors choose roles for many different reasons. An actor might want to choose a role because he or she might want to challenge themselves artistically. So, for instance, hypothetically, Brian Cranston might think, how challenging would it be to explore the world of a man who has everything but yet has no physical way to enjoy it? What must it be like to be trapped, imprisoned inside your own body? Oftentimes, actors choose roles for education. Most really good actors choose roles out of their comfort zone and their personal experience because they want to have a transformative experience, which is good for the actor because it can open them up to a new level of empathy for the community that the character represents. And then that empathy allows them to speak on issues that that community faces, which results in the actor becoming an ally for that community. Now, of course, we know this isn't always the case. We do have the superficial actors that just want to take these quote unquote brave roles so that they can be Oscar contenders. And if we're honest with ourselves, we as viewers like seeing the actor go through a transformative experience. We often like to hear the stories about how an actor was so method that they lost 50 or 60 pounds or, or gained 100 pounds, didn't bathe because they wanted to feel what it was like to be homeless or something. And I think when you have an actor who is actually able-bodied, like for instance, playing somebody who's disabled or somebody who's playing a trans character who's not really trans. It's like you know that they're they're not that role when they go into the movie. So, and you're not as the viewer, so it's like you're actually going through that transformative experience with that actor and you're more attuned to all the uh, complexities and the realities of what that character faces versus if you're dealing with uh, 
uh, an actor who is already from that community, uh, a lot of times the audience doesn't pay as much attention because they just take that reality and experience for granted. Sometimes, but not all. I mean, we do love it. I mean, just think about it. Jared Leto put on an amazing performance in Dallas Buyers Club, which earned him his Oscar. Unfortunately, but with the culture we're living in right now, that movie never would have been made at this point, or at least Jared Leto would not have gotten that role, let alone an Oscar. I mean, just look at what happened to Scarlett Johansson. She backed out of playing a trans role because of the backlash. And finally, when it comes to actors' choices, I mean, at the end of the day, an actor's got to eat. And, you know, I don't think Brian Cranston is starving for any anything, uh, given his Breaking Bad success. But other than what you see in the award shows, all of those A-list actors, more than 90% of the acting community doesn't make enough money to support itself by acting. So an actor's got to eat. Disabled brothers and sisters, don't hate on me. I am bringing it home for you, I promise. Just hang in there. So at the end of the day, I'm not mad at Brian Cranston, and I don't think that he should have gotten the backlash. In fact, if there was an able-bodied actor uh, to play a quadriplegic, I think Brian Cranston is perfect for it. But I still have an issue with it. I do. I actually blame the studios. Which goes to my point about being disabled. I will admit, when I saw that Brian Cranston was playing a quadriplegic, I'm like, here we go, another one. So I totally get what it feels like to want to see an actual person from that community playing that character. Somebody who's from the LGBT community, or somebody who's disabled, or somebody who's insert whatever category. I, I think I, I think that comment was so ignorant and so dumb saying well show me the some show me a quadriplegic who can do what Brian Cranston can do that is the point there are so many actors out there right now who have disabilities that are not given a chance and and it's ridiculous you know my issue is not with Brian Cranston my issue is with the studios you know they claim to be these experts on what sells and what doesn't and the simple fact of the matter is is that we saw what happened with Black Panther right up until uh, the release of Black Panther there is this myth still floating around that black movies don't sell overseas. Well, look at the numbers. Look at all the records that Black Panther has broken. Same with Crazy Rich Asians. So there's this idea that, that Hollywood knows better and that they don't need to invest in the right people to play the right roles. And I just think that's ridiculous. I'll talk about race for an instance real quickly. You know, there's this saying that Hollywood isn't racist. In fact, the only color they care about is green. Uh, as in the money. But if you're basing what you think will make you money off of stereotypes and discrimination, then yeah, that's racist. So, but anyways, I don't think the issue is that we don't want to see anybody play somebody disabled if they're not. Like, I just think that we want more representation of us on screen, meaning we want more chances for people who do have disabilities to play those characters. Enough so much that we won't care if we see somebody like Brian Cranston or somebody else playing somebody disabled. And truth be told, Brian Cranston can keep that role. It's a great, looks like a great role, but me, I would love to play the leading man. I would love to play all the roles that people think that somebody who's disabled can't play, play it. I can do those things. I just think that directors and studios and executives, they just, and the writers, they just need to take a chance. and and show that you can take any role and put somebody who's disabled in it. In fact, I think the, the, the best thing that you can do is have somebody who is actually disabled in the role so you can learn from their experience and they can tell you firsthand through, through the filming. Oftentimes, when you don't have the actual actor from that community playing that character, you will run the risk of portraying them inaccurately. I would love to see more people who are quadriplegics and paraplegics and uh, just people that come from all these different communities actually being able to play the role. And it doesn't even have to center around their disability. They could just be playing a role. And that way, when you do see somebody who wants to uh, play somebody who's disabled, for whatever reason, it won't be an issue. And by the way, as far as acting chops, my hat's off to Christopher Reeve, God rest his soul, and his wife, Dana Reeve. I think. Christopher Reeve's best work as an actor was done after he had his injury. So that's my opinion. My bottom line is we need more actors with disabilities on screen. We need more more material for people like us and, uh, and more opportunities. So that's my two cents. Uh, drop down in the comments section. 
Let me know what you think and like this video and hit subscribe if you haven't already. And also hit that little bell to get notifications so you'll be the first to know when I post new videos.